Now that we've seen how to execute tests using Maven, let's have a closer look at specifically unit tests. So most developers will be familiar with the concept of unit tests. And the most important thing to mention is that we use technology that just executes very, very quickly. You have seen the build um, that I was just executing and JUnit is, is a technology that is actually very, very fast. And we can execute hundreds of tests in no time, in milliseconds. And this should be the goal. So usually I have very plain and simple test cases um, here in the unit test scope. So let's have a look at this coffee shop uh, production class. So that is the entrance point for our use cases. And it has a few things related to coffee. So we can, you know, like get some coffee, get some different types, get some bean origins that we uh, support in our application. We can create an order. We can have uh, the processing being started off the unfinished orders to get the um, status being updated and things like that. And then we can write a test for it. So in the uh, easiest thing that is just a plain JUnit class, I use JUnit 5 here. And then I can set up, you know, just some object and I can simply instantiate object. It doesn't matter if that is a spring application or a job enterprise application with usually some beans being created by some framework. I can simply instantiate a class and ignore all the annotations if I have some and make that work, right? Which would mean that I would have to mock and instantiate dependent objects that my class is, um, is collaborating with. So these um, dependents are typically mocked away. So I use Makito typically to do that. And then I can, you know, execute some logic. And now there's already, yeah, some things to mention here. As you can see, the, the code quite easily can become quite complex if we do a very naive approach. And that is, well, that is depending on what our test class is doing um, or the class under test is doing. And yeah, whether it makes sense to use specifically unit testing to test some uh, logic here. So there is some other test technology out there that makes it a little bit easier to create um, these test classes and these test doubles for us. But still, the point is I want to use some very plain and basic technology, for example, just plain JUnit without any extension or without any other JUnit 4 runner. So in order to do that, ideally, we write unit tests for classes that have a very high um, cohesion, so a high density of logic, a high uh, cyclomatic complexity, and low coupling, so low interaction with other classes. Why? Regardless of the test technology that we use here, if we always set up um, a class and then also verify the interaction with other dependent classes, well, what we do, we nail down how the class must behave and how the internal structure must look like. And now what happens if we would like to do some refactoring in our production code, for example, move some classes around, change some behavior, change some method from here to there, then what happens that we all know our tests break, right? Usually they don't even compile. And then we have hundreds of test cases that are not really maintainable. And then we have to, well, throw them away or, you know, ignore them. This is typically what happens, which is really bad. So this is what happens if we have non maintainable tests. And what you see here is a very naive approach that well wires a lot of things together. And this is not the best way or the most efficient way to do this. The same is true if we use um, another um, extension, for example, we could have a Mokito extension. If you're um, using spring, then you might be um, used to spring context tests, or you might use things like CDI unit or a Killian on uh, enterprise Java is all very similar. They all fire up some embedded simulated environments that basically um, can fire up and wire together your beans, which is a little bit more um, efficient um, on the testing side to write. But first of all, it doesn't guarantee that you also don't have a lot of, you know, a verification and market behavior in your test classes that again would break if you refactor your project. And also a lot of these technologies then very quickly make your test run slow. You don't realize that in the, in the very beginning, but the more test classes you have, typically, if all of these test classes fire up a new context, then the slower your build gets. And I can say this from experience, then you end up with build times and you know, minutes and not seconds anymore. So that is from my experience. And this is why I would rather keep to very simple um, technology and to very simple test cases. So now the point is, if you have some classes where you have a high, um, um, a high density of logic, especially high compl uh, cyclomatic complexity, then it makes sense to have um, unit tests that just verify 
the behavior of these classes very, very quickly and you get very fast feedback before we even get to the topic of acceptance tests and system tests and so on. And then you have a very fast feedback to verify whether this works. This is another example to test the validation of my order creation. This actually tests a bean validation validator. So this is my order validator. And then I uh, can set up, you know, parameterized tests. This actually is also very a powerful concept where I uh, have a lot of different input and output. So I see, okay, feed this with, with valid data or with invalid data and it, then it has to um, act accordingly. So there it makes a lot of sense to have a unit test. I can verify many, many use cases in no time and get a very fast response whether it works or not. The same is true if you build up an algorithm or anything with you know, a lot of logic and low coupling. Then unit tests can be very, very powerful. And in the next episode, I'll show you a concept to uh, make, uh, make these unit tests or code level tests a little bit more maintainable.